video from my 2018 New Year's trip to Monterey Bay, California. We took the 101 up to Monterey Bay this year and made a few stops along the way. The first stop was the Pismo Beach Butter Monarch Butterfly Grove. This grove is a grove of eucalyptus trees where large groups of monarch butterflies will spend the winter. Monarch butterflies that live along the plain states actually migrate from Canada down to a forest in Mexico. These, however, will spend the entire winter here. Another difference between the monarchs in the plain states and the ones out here in California is that these monarchs live significantly longer than a normal monarch butterfly. The average lifespan for a normal monarch butterfly is only six weeks as an adult, whereas these monarch butterflies will actually live six months. Some believe it's because these don't reach sexual maturity quite so fast. As you can see, they gather in very large clusters on the eucalyptus leaves, and when someone first arrives, they don't even realize that they're surrounded by monarch butterflies. It's only after a little bit of time when their eyes begin to get used to their surroundings that they realize that they're just surrounded. Unfortunately, the number of monarchs has declined year after year, and I believe that this year is their lowest on record. It's everybody's hope that the number of monarchs will rebound at some point, and no one is quite sure what's causing the drop-off. There's many theories, mostly focusing on pesticides, unfortunately. There are a few groves like this up and down the coast, but this one is especially beautiful. And there's a docent that gives talks twice a day. The next spot we hit was Morro Bay, specifically Morro Rock. We scramble down the rocks to try to get a little bit lower to the water, and an entire raft of sea otters came swimming over to us in order to wrap themselves in the kelp, as you can see here, so that way they could tuck in for the night. Sea otters are, of course, the heaviest member of the weasel family, and probably one of the most adorable creatures on Earth. Fun fact is that sea otters have the highest density fur of any mammal, which is part of the reason why they were hunted basically to the verge of extinction. Sea otters stay warm by the air that is trapped in their fur. And so they spend a significant amount of time every day grooming. Unlike seals and sea lions, they don't have a thick layer of blubber to keep themselves warm. So they keep themselves warm by an extremely heightened metabolism. They are voracious eaters and can consume up to 30% of their body weight in food per day. An adult male sea otter can consume as much as 15 pounds of seafood in one day. This family dynamic that they have is absolutely adorable. Besides wrapping themselves in kelp, as they sleep, they will sometimes actually hold hands with each other to make sure that one doesn't float away. They are by far one of the cutest sea creatures that you can find and are a hit for everybody. Here you can see a panning shot of the full raft of sea otters. There were maybe eight or nine all total. Absolutely adorable. Next, we went to San Simeon to see the elephant seal rookery. Here you can see two sub-adult males who are practicing their beachmaster battle skills. Elephant seals are a polygamous harem breeder. There will be one, what's called beach master, which is a very, very large dominant male, who will have a harem of a half a dozen or more females, all waiting to give birth to these little adorable pups. Here's one that's attempting to suckle on his mother in order to get some milk. This particular location is a breeding ground. So the elephant seals will come here, I believe late November, early December, in order to give birth. And once the females give birth, 
they quickly go back into heat and can mate again. The calling back and forth between the mothers and the pups was adorable. This one, I actually have a great picture of the, the pup coming up to the mother and the mother comforting it with her flipper. Sometimes, unfortunately, the mothers don't make it back and there can be stranded pups. There are documented instances where the pups will actually uh, attach themselves to another mother. Another mother will basically adopt the pups. After this, we made it to Monterey and we went diving. While I had my head stuck in some rocks looking for nudibranchs, a very large ocean sunfish appeared from literally out of the blue just behind us. I had a 120 millimeter macro lens on, so I had to give myself a good 15 feet of distance between myself and this mola mola in order to try to get any of it in frame. And as you can see here, I still was panning. The reason it came was because the water was full of these nettles. Mola mola are awesome because their primary diet is jellyfish. 